7th anniversary of Martyrs Day, the Syrian people commemorate May 6th to honor the sacrifices of their martyrs. And Moscow expresses deep concern over attempts to prepare the public opinion for possible military intervention in Syria. Large-scale condemnations of the Israeli aggression on Syria and calls for the UN Security Council to prevent further deterioration. A religious mass in the Cathedral of Mary in Damascus and Patriarch John X prays to God to help Syria out of its flight. Good afternoon, this is News in English. On the National Day of Martyrs, the most generous and noble human beings, and in commemoration of their sacrifices, the Secretary of the Damascus branch of the Ba'ath Party, held by Mr. Mwafaq al-Basha, together with the Mayor of Damascus, Dr. Bishra Saban, visited the cemetery of the martyrs of Syrian Air Forces, placing flowers on their graves and observing a minute of silence for the rest of their souls. And on the same occasion, and in condemnation of the plots of the Turkish government against the Syrian people, a popular stand was launched by a number of national opposition parties before the Turkish embassy in Damascus. And in an information source asserted that Erdogan's statement on this occasion showed disregard for the humanitarian, ethical and religious values and exposed his government's involvement in the plots against Syria side by side with Israel. The source said that Erdogan showed courage when his ambassador was insulted by the Israeli entity and when Israel attacked the Turkish ship Marmara. However, Erdogan's so-called courage appeared truly when he sent chemical weapons and car bombs to extremist terrorists who murder innocent people and destroy graves and mosques and blunder factories. The source said that the Turkish people should bring Erdogan and his gang to account. The cabinet stressed in a statement released following an extraordinary session held yesterday to discuss the Israeli aggression on Syria that this aggression opens the door wide before all possibilities and shows the strong connection between the terrorist extremist groups and the Israeli enemy. Prime Minister Dr. Wa'al Halaqi asserted that terrorist attacks would never break Syria's determination to remain steadfast and to restore security and stability. He pointed out that Syria's throughout its history was to defend the whole Arab nation and to protect its security and stability. He asserted that the government continued its endeavors to consolidate the economic potentials of development and to strengthen the capacities of our valent army. He added that the process of national dialogue continued in order to save Syria. He expressed appreciation for the unity of the people and the army against Syria's enemies inside and outside the country. He stressed the importance of continuing the process of construction and the restoration of security and stability to our homeland. The Minister of Information, Omran Azabi, who read the statement, said that the Israeli enemy committed a flagrant aggression on Sunday against the Syrian Arab Republic using missiles of bombarded military institutions in a blatant violation of all in the internal national law rules. The statement affirmed that a long time ago Syria referred to the strong connection between the Takfiri thought of the terrorist gangs and Jabhat al-Nasra, the offshoot of al-Qaeda in Syria on the one hand, and the Zionist thought of the other hand with regard to aims and tools. The statement clarified that Syria offered a lot of testimonies about this connection, adding that this aggression is another testimony. The statement went on to say that the aggression occurred as the Syrian army forces achieved great victories in combating terrorism, stressing that Israel and its agents cannot destabilize regional security or control the future of nations. The statement concluded that the Syrian government underlines the necessity of pressing ahead with the achievements of its army, combating Israeli tools and protecting the country and people against any internal or external aggression by all possible means. 
Foreign and Expatriates Ministry said that the flagrant Israeli aggression on sites of the, of the armed forces in Syria stresses the coordination between Israel and the terrorist groups and the Takfiris, who are affiliated to Jabhat al-Nusra, which is a branch of Al-Qaeda. Minister of Foreign Affairs and expatriates said that flagrant Israeli aggression on sites for the armed forces in Syria discussed the Minister of Foreign Affairs Walid al discussed the flagrant Israeli aggression on military uh, sites with his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov. The, this aggression shows, according to Al-Mu'allim, the nature of the aims that, that joins Israel and armed groups in Syria and the involvement of these groups and their supporters in the U.S. and Europe in prolonging violence and undermining Syria's role. Lavrov expressed that his country is concerned by the breach of Syria's sovereignty, warning that this may lead to unpredictable developments in the region. Russia expressed deep concern at the suspicious attempts to prepare the public opinion for the possibility of military intervention in Syria. The Russian Foreign Ministry asserted that the Israeli attacks on Syria threatened to escalate tension in the region. It called upon the West to stop politicizing the use of chemical weapons and to stop the creation of an atmosphere of that is hostile to Syria. Russia stressed the unacceptability of continuing to postpone the response to the Syrian demand to the UN to investigate the use of chemical weapons by armed terrorist groups in the town of Khan al-Assad last March. Large-scale condemnation against the Israeli flagrant aggression on the scientific research center in Damascus countryside continues. In Russia, the Syrian community, together with their Russian friends, made a stand of solidarity with Syria and in condemnation of the flagrant Israeli aggression on Syria. They stood together in the quarter of martyrs in Moscow on the occasion of the anniversary of Arab martyrs. Algeria strongly condemned the Israeli aggression on Syria and asserted that it was a dangerous violation of international law and sovereignty of an Arab country. Algeria called upon the UN Security Council to shoulder its responsibility to put an end to such flagrant aggressions which are aimed to complicating the already deterioration situation in this region. The Yemeni government also condemned this Israeli aggression, which was aimed to complicating the situation. The Iranian Defense Minister Wahidi asserted that Syria is a strong country and has every right to repulse the Israeli aggression. He described this aggression as a dangerous game, asserting that the Israeli entity cannot escape its responsibility for this adventure. He said that wise people in the world should prevent Israel from such adventures, which only serve America. The French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius justified this aggression, but he also said that it carried a risk of extending the dispute to the neighboring countries. The British Foreign Minister and the American President Obama also justified the Israeli aggression yesterday and claimed that Israel was only defending itself. In response to attempts by some parties and international powers to accuse Syria of using chemical weapons and to solve the armed, absolve the armed opposition of this accusation, Carla Del Ponte, member of the UN Inquiry Committee, announced that the investigators collected testimonies of victims and medical personnel showing that the opposition fighters used sarin nerve gas. She said the investigators completed their report last week. The report showed certain clues that have not become certain evidence of this event whose victims were treated. She added that sarin was used by the opposition fighters, not by the Syrian authorities. In Latakia's countryside, a tour on the international road between Latakia and Aleppo and the surrounding villages shows the advancement of the Syrian military units in that area. The international road Latakia Alipo, known as the road of new investment, was built to shorten the distances by the governorates and even to make social rapprochement. But as terrorism doesn't care neither for development nor rapprochement, the terrorists had tried many times to block that road, targeting every vehicle that passes on it. Syrian TV camera reached Kfiri on the road about 20 kilometers away from Latakia, 
where Syrian Arab army soldiers maintained presence standing steadfast with dignity to tell us about the area where they face groups of terrorists located in certain sites. One soldier said that the area which included Al Qom al Tahtani, Al Qom al Fuqani, Durin, Selma, Al Maruniyat, the bridge, Jabal Nobe, Jabal Al Qasab, Al Zwayik, Al Dagmashiyah, and Dagmam has been wreaked havoc by the terrorist groups who forced many residents to leave their houses. But every time they infiltrated, the army inflicted heavy casualties among them, especially in Khirbat al Baz, Al Huwe, and Jabal Nabiyunis. The soldier explained that the terrorist hideouts are observed and closely watched by Syrian Arab army soldiers who confronted the terrorists and prevented them from taking positions in that area, killing many of them. Syrian TV also reached Jebel Nobe and met with Syrian Arab army soldiers who maintained their presence in the area to prevent the terrorists from reaching the international road of Aleppo, Latakia. In Damascus, a large religious mass was held in the Cathedral of Mary, led by the Roman Orthodox Patriarch John X of Antioch and the Orient. The Patriarch spoke about the noble values of Easter concerning the happiness of mankind and prayed to God to consolidate peace on earth, particularly in our beloved country, which embraced the first Christian church, asking God to help Syria to get out of this crisis and to regain those days when its sons spread love in the world. Abdurrahman Shalqam, Libya's representative at the UN, exposed the role of the Qatar Sheikhdom in supporting extremist Islamists in Libya and supplying them with money and arms. He called upon Qatar to stop interfering in Libya's internal affairs, asserting that Libya rejected these practices completely. That was it. More details on our website www.syriaonline.sy. The cultivated lands in Deir Zor increases as well as Russian oil exports. All that in our economic news after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The Minister of Agriculture emphasized that the wheatlands cultivated in the Resort Governorate approaches 60,000 hectares as they are totally irrigated, adding that the crops' production are getting better, whereas the prices of the soft wheat is 36 Syrian pounds for each kilogram, which is one of the highest prices in the region. So there will be rewards for those who deliver the crops in any other governorate or any other area that is easy to reach, indicating that the farmers were excluded from the previous indebtedness while delivering the crops this year. A source declared that Russia's oil exports to Europe have increased by 7% to reach 13 billion cubic meters due to the cold weather. The company, which provides a quarter of Europe's needs of oil, is going to increase its export to reach 150 billion cubic meters. Crude oil futures rose in Asia due to the political tensions in the Middle East after the Israeli aggression on Syria. European shares were little changed after the benchmark Stocks Europe 500 index rallied for a second week to its highest level in almost five years. The US index futures were little changed while the Asian shares rose led by mining companies after faster than forecasted US employment growth, which boosted optimism in the world's largest economy, pushing a regional equities gauge towards a 10-week high. Gold approached its highest level in over two weeks, uh, but gains were li limited due to the rising stock markets and data, which reduced speculations of more monetary stimulus for the U.S. Central Bank. Gold rose 0.5 percent because of the euro rising, as the U.S. futures were 0.9 up.
The yen weakened for a third day, approaching 100 per US dollar. Amidst optimism that the US economic recovery is gathering pace, which reduced the demand for the Japanese currency as a haven. In addition, the yen declined against 14 of its 16 major peers, as a report on May the 3rd showed that the US jobless rate has unexpectedly fallen to a four-year low. Ladies and gentlemen, this was our economic news for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Have a nice day.